So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up WLED on your ESP32. So without further delay, let's dive in. Now I've done a few 3D printed projects that use an ESP32 and NeoPixel RGB SMD5050 LEDs. Now, rather than going through the WLED setup in every single video, this video is basically dedicated to setting up that ESP32. So first of all, let's go over what you're going to need. Now, of course, you're going to need the ESP32 itself, and I'll put a link in the description for Amazon UK and US so you can grab one. And sometimes it's better to grab three at the same time because you get them at a bit of a discount. Now, of course, you're going to need some LEDs. Now, these can be on a custom board like you'll see later on in the video, or you could just get some of those LED strips that you see on Amazon. Again, I'll put loads of links in the description so you can make a decision yourself. But if you do get the custom boards, then we've partnered up with JLCPCB and I'm actually providing the Gerber files in the description below so you can get them made directly from JLC and you'll have a custom board. And there's gonna be a couple of board designs that I use constantly going forward. So just go check out the links below and have a look around. Now this will require solar Ordering, but it's super easy to do you don't need a microscope you can't really go wrong to be fair there's nothing really to mess up and I'll go through the soldering a little bit later on but as I said you'll need a soldering iron some wire some leaded solder if you can obviously unleaded if you can't some really good quality flux and that's pretty much it that's what we need to wire it all up and then of course we need something to power it now, what I tend to do is just get an old USB cable that I don't need anymore. Get one of those ones that just does power and not data, and then it's not as a big a deal. Cut the end off, expose the positive and negative, and then we can wire it up to the ESP32. Again, I'll go through everything in this video. Now, before we get onto the soldering section, Let's get that ESP32 configured with the WLED software. Now this is super easy because WLED has a web-based installer. So let's jump on over to the computer and have a quick look at that. Now this is a relatively simple process. Connect the ESP32 to your PC with a USB cable. Make sure it can do data as well. Click install and then you'll see your ESP32 in the box click connect now because mine already has something on it i'm having to erase the data but you should just have one that says install now this is going to take a few minutes to install so let's fast forward this bit so now it's actually completed we're going to configure the wi-fi so basically we're going to tell it what wi-fi to connect to now I have a guest one called Netgear08. I'm going to put the password in and click connect. So it's going to try and connect to the Wi-Fi and if it's successful, which I hope it should be, there we go. What you want to do now is visit the device because we may as well do the other configuration while we're here. Now this is the interface and this is where you change all the colors and the effects and we'll look at that later. But if you go to configure, the first thing we're going to do is give it a name because we don't want them all called WLED. So I'm just going to call it my RGB device. Now, this is the important part. Go to the LED preferences. There's a couple of things we're going to want to change in here. So the first of which is the data GPIO pin. Now, this is going to be the pin that we solder the wire for the data line to the LEDs. And I set it to number two because it's right opposite the positive and negative. So it just looks tidier. Now we've got the length. Now this is how many LEDs you're connecting. If you set it to too many, then it's gonna give you a weird kind of pattern and it needs to know exactly how many LEDs are. Let's put it that way. So we're using one of the smaller boards. So we're gonna set it to 15. Next, we've got the maximum power set to 850 milliamps by default but i know i'm going to be plugging it in to a one amp usb port so we can set that to one amp if you're not too sure just leave it on the default 
save those changes and that's it we're all ready and we're all set up ready to go so as you can see installing the WLED software then configuring it is a breeze there's not much to it and obviously if you follow this guide you can't really go wrong now another thing you can do is you can download the WLED app it's really easy to use and as long as your phone is on the same network as the WLEDs you click discover lights and then it's just going to find them all on the network and then you can fully control them from your phone now one thing to know if you do unplug your WLED lights and they're not connected to the network for some time your router might give them a different IP address so if you do plug them back in and then you go on the app and for some reason it says the device is offline and you can't connect to it delete the device discover again and you'll see that it's actually changed its IP address now you can get around this by going into your router and setting the IP address to static but that's kind of out of the scope of this video if you know how to do that then it's probably a good idea to do it if not you just have to discover the lights if you ever do unplug it for and I'm talking a couple of days or something like that. If you unplug it and then plug it back in within an hour, it should give it the same IP address again. So just before I show you how to wire everything up and get soldering, I just want to give a massive thank you to today's sponsor, JLC PCB, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have these really cool circuit boards that I'm going to be showing you in a moment. JLC PCB pride themselves on offering a fast, reliable, friendly service that's unmatched on price with unbelievable quality and they can get your PCBs out within 24 hours because it's all done under one roof and it's super easy to order. So let's take a look. I've designed this PCB. It's got RGB LEDs on it. It looks awesome and we're going to be using it in projects. So in the description, you can get the Gerber files and then you just drag and drop them in. And it's so easy to use this interface. So as you can see, it's all loaded up. We can set how many we want. We'll just go for five for now. You've got different layers, different designs, the thickness. It's all straightforward. We're going to go for white because it just looks really cool. You can get them to assemble it with the LEDs or you can get a stencil as well. So let's add this to the car and as you can see it's two dollars that's nothing even if you want 30 it's going to cost you six dollars 80 cents as always check the description below for more information and all the links so again thanks to jlc pcb for sponsoring this video so let's have a look at the circuit boards that they sent me and then get it all wired up so JLC PCB has provided me with three different designs. I did design all these myself. Now we have a long strip. Then we have this 12 by 12. There's absolutely tons of LEDs on this. And then we have the one we're going to be using in this video, which is a three by five. So 15 LEDs in total. Now I picked up this PCB holder off Amazon for like 10 bucks. It's actually really good, it's really cool. It holds your PCBs in place so you can have the wire in one hand and the soldering iron in your other, etc. You're not trying to balance it and it keeps it really steady. I'll stick a link in the description below so you can pick one up yourself. So it's time to get the soldering iron heated up and we're going to set it to 320 degrees Celsius which is about 600 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. So step one is to tin the three through holes on the back of the RGB board. This is nice and simple. We're going to stick some flux on there, get some solder on our soldering iron and then just tap it on the back of each point. Now, if you've ever tried to solder without flux, it leaves sharp peaks on each of those points. So by using flux, it just makes it a nice shiny ball on the end. Now, here's a little trick that I do with these nylon covered wires I have. You can't do this with normal rubber because it just melts too quickly. But these nylon wires are heat resistant. So what I do is I put a little bit of flux on the end of them 
And then I'll get a blob of solder on my soldering iron, just on the end. Not too much, so it'll drip off or fall off. Then I'll insert just the end of the wire into the blob. And what it will do is it will burn off that coating just enough to expose the wire. And then that will be nice and perfect for when we actually solder it to the back of the board, which is what we're going to do next. And here we have another top tip. Clean your tip. You don't want any residual solder on there for too long. The solder actually has a little bit of flux inside. It's like got a flux core. So if you leave it on there too long, it does get a bit nasty. So next we're going to solder the wires onto the back of the board. At the moment, there's nothing on the other end of the wires. So it doesn't really matter which wire goes where. But if you struggle with stuff like that, then you can always color code the wires. Now for me, there was still quite a bit of flux left on there. So as you can see, the solder's melting really nicely and I'm not getting any peaks. If you do have sharp peaks when you take your soldering iron away, just use a little bit more flux. Right, so now that board's out the way, we can take it off the clamp and now we're going to solder the other end of the wires to the ESP32. Don't forget to use IPA to clean all that flux off. So now we're going to solder those three wires to the ESP32. Now, do you remember in the software where we set the GPIO pin to number two? Well, that's going to be D2. Now, of course, if you did leave that at 16 or changed it to something else, then you'll have to look at the schematic to sort of see where that point is. So we're just going to tin these three points up. Now, the positive and negative are on the other side. The one closest to the USB port is five volts and then the one just above that is the ground so we don't need to go over this again really i'm going to strip the wires back using that trick with a blob of solder and flux then i'm just going to check which points go to where and then get them soldered to the correct points on the esp32 now this is where you have two options you can get a usb cable cut the end off and connect the positive and negative to the exact same points we've just done on the ESP32. So there'll be two wires going to five volts and two wires going to ground. But of course, you do have the option of just using a micro USB cable. So I've plugged it in and as you can see, the LEDs have lit up orange. Now, of course, if you plug it in and some of the LEDs haven't lit up, just make sure that you've configured the right amount of LEDs in the software. Now, I decided to quickly show you how the app works. Now, it does work on Android and iOS. This is an Android phone. And as you can see, I'm touching on the different colors and the LEDs are changing. You can also increase and decrease the brightness. And we also have some really cool effects. So if you go to the effects on the bottom, you can make the LEDs do different dances and patterns and things like that. Some of the effects are just really cool. It's just awesome. Now, the best thing about ESP32s and WLED is it's relatively cheap to implement and you can pretty much put them anywhere you like. Believe it or not, there's 10 ESP32s behind me powering all sorts of stuff like shelves around the TV, etc. They're really cool and I'm going to be using them quite a lot in projects going forward. But what do you guys think? Do you think ESP32s are the best way to go? Or do you know of another microcontroller that can connect to Wi-Fi and use the WLED software that's maybe more fit for purpose, maybe they're cheaper, etc. Let me know in the comments below and then I'll look into them, maybe swap from the ESP32 to something else. Well, that about wraps it up for this video, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and help you out the best I can. I'm JP, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.